Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here, and today with the topic of the properties of discrete time Fourier transform. Now, you know this very well, we've already seen the properties of the continuous time Fourier transform in a great detail where I have proven each and every property step by step. Over here, I will not prove it. I will not prove a single property. Why? Because it is exactly the same as it was in the continuous time case. I did not want it to make this video as well. But you know, <laughs> I did not have a video. So I said, uh, let us, uh, you know, make one and, and I did not have any preparation for the next topic. So I said, let it be the properties of discrete time Fourier transform. And the other major thing is that in the Ramazan, I also does not have that sort of stamina to, uh, you know, make longer videos or make two or three videos. So that is also a reason. Anyways, the next video, the linear constant coefficient differential equations video, I've already recorded. So you will see it next. Fine, the previous and the next I recorded together. So I would see if you have any problems or if you want to have more examples or whatever. We've seen the book examples, but if you want more examples, so you can definitely comment. Uh, so I would try to make a video on examples or if you we do not make a video. So anyways, that would be covered in the assignment part as well. And I will also solve the paper then later on. So and that will also have questions on this. So the examples would be covered. Anyways, coming to the topic of the properties of discrete time Fourier transform, these are the two relations for finding the forward Fourier transform and for finding the, the inverse Fourier transform. The first and the very most important property is the periodicity of it. So I'm not giving it a number, I am giving it stars. This is something different from the previous periodicity. And what does this periodicity property says? This says that if you have an exponential of e of j omega, so this would be equal to again what x of exponential of j and omega plus 2 pi. So if in place of omega you have an omega plus 2 pi, the Fourier transform would be equal at the two points. Why? We've already know, we already know this. We know that the Fourier transform is periodic with a period. 2 pi and this is what this property suggests you can prove it for the formula by this formula in place of g omega omega you put omega plus 2 pi then you take uh, omega to, uh, multiple of 2 or let me write this one because this is a little uh, not you know this is not difficult I'm not writing it because it's difficult to something this is different in a continuous time case that is why I'm writing so uh, if I have an exponential of j omega uh, omega plus 2 pi, so this would be what? Have a look. So this would be a summation uh, n running from a negative infinity to positive infinity. You have an x of n. You have an exponential of negative j uh, uh, j. Uh, wait, an n I missed. So yes, n I missed. Uh, yes. We don't have it in over here. I did not miss it. We have it over that side. So it would be a j of uh, 2 pi into n into an exponential of negative j omega n. So I will look at this negative j 2 pi into n would be 1. <laughs> and, and, and we would be only remaining with this thing. n running from a negative infinity to positive x of n exponential of negative j omega and so have a look this thing is back equal to the previous thing now how did I write that so as we know at exponential of j theta this is equal to cos of theta plus j sine of theta now if your theta was uh, a multiple of 2 pi so multiple of 2 pi cos would be 1 multiple of 2 pi sine would be 0 and that is how I said it is 1 so this was the periodicity property now, as we saw in the previous case, the first, now I name it first. Why? Because this is the same as that one. Linearity. The linearity property says what? If you have a signal x1 of n, it has the corresponding Fourier pair x1 of exponential of j omega. You have another signal x2 of n. You have 
the Fourier transform x2 of j omega the linearity property says what this implies if you have a times x1 of n plus b times x2 of n which means what if you have the linear combination of any two signals in the time domain the corresponding frequency domain Fourier transform would be the linear combination of the two as well so if a signal is the is the what is the uh, uh, linear combination of signals in the time domain the corresponding Fourier transform would be the the, the linear combination of the uh, Fourier transforms individual Fourier transforms and have a look I missed this A and this B over here fine this is the first property the second property is time shifting the second property is time shifting and what does it say if x of n has has a Fourier transform x of j omega so this is uh, you know uh, a standard sim symbol x of n is corresponding x of exponential of j omega now if you f if you shift the signal x of n minus n naught now the corresponding Fourier transform would be what it would be an exponential of j n uh, j omega n naught multiplied with the original Fourier transform fine now have a look this n naught has a negative sign over here so this n naught has a negative sign over here now if this n naught over here has a positive sign so this n naught over here would have a positive sign and you need to keep this in your mind if if you see we have the impulse signal the corresponding Fourier transform is one right now if I shift the impulse it's if I have delta of n plus 1 now the corresponding Fourier transform will be exponential of j omega and not is plus 1 so I have a plus 1 over here and into 1 <coughs> fine <coughs> sorry okay now similarly if you shift it to the other side if you have a negative or uh, a one so you will have exponential of j omega into negative 1 and and the original is 1 this is the time shift property similarly now the time reversal property the third the third is time reversal property x of minus n would have, if x of n is Fourier transform x of exponential of j omega so x of minus have exponential of minus of j omega what do we mean if you replace in the time x in the time domain you replace n by minus of n in the frequency domain you replace omega by minus of omega now uh, we already have proved this as well for example a to the power n u of n has the corresponding Fourier transform 1 upon 1 minus a exponential of j omega right yes now now if I have now if I have a to the power minus n u of minus n which means I have time reversed this so in the corresponding frequency domain you would replace omega by minus of omega and now this is my property and we already have proved this in the examples wasn't it like this it was the difference property over there we had the differentiation property because that was continuous time over here we have the difference property or it's called the differencing property fine so what do we have if you have an x of n minus x of n minus n naught so what would be the case or let me tell you first for an x of n minus 1 so if you have the first difference involved what would you do you would multiply the signal by 1 minus exponential of minus j omega you would multiply the original Fourier transform by this thing is that clear now how do we prove this time shifting and uh, linearity property both are involved have a look over here we have the time shifting involved and over here over, then we have the linearity involved 
if you want me to prove it so first if I write the generalized case this is for the first difference right this is for the first difference now if I write for the nth order difference or if I write generally so generally what would I have if I have x of n minus x of n minus n naught so this would be a 1 minus exponential of minus j omega n naught multiplied with the original Fourier transform right now how have I done this so have a look x of n minus n naught would have the Fourier transform what it's shifted by negative n naught c units so we already know that it would be an exponential of uh, uh, negative j omega n naught times x of a of j omega right and then you have x of n minus this thing so so this means what now x of n minus x of n minus n naught this would be now the linear combination so x of n had for a transform x of exponential of j omega you have a minus sign and this thing exponential of negative j omega n naught so of exponential of j omega you take its exponential of j omega common 1 minus exponential of negative j omega n naught into this thing so this is the thing right <coughs> okay sorry uh, the next the next is the accumulation property the next is the accumulation property accumulation and that is the discrete time equivalent for integration if, if I introduce a variable k k running from negative infinity to n x of k this would have the corresponding Fourier transform what so have a look over there you divide you multiply the Fourier transform by some factor so the accumulation is opposite to differenti differencing so you would have to divide over here by that factor right isn't it like this it is j omega now we don't have n naught over here right and then what, what do we have we have one other term plus pi times what is that term what is that term yes pi times x of exponential of j omega as we saw in the in that case we had another term plus pi times x of exponential of j omega x of zero x of zero yeah yes yes at omega equal to zero so we would have x of exponential of j into zero now this we saw in the continuous time case how did we saw we saw it for the constant term this is the, uh, representing the dc term or the average or the constant term right but over there we had the symbol pi x of j like this but have a look this is a discrete time Fourier transform and this is periodic so periodic means this would repeat and we also have a delta of omega right delta of omega delta of omega but we know that this is periodic this would repeat so I would for the repetition I would include I would include another variable let's say k k running from a negative infinity to positive infinity and delta of omega minus and it would repeat after 2 pi interval and k is the independent variable so this summation and this 2 pi k means that it would repeat after each 2 pi interval and the rest thing you know this is representing the constant term isn't it like this it is expansion property the sixth is expansion property and what do we have in the expansion property as we had scaling in the continuous time case right so if we have an x of n upon k so the corresponding Fourier transform would become x of exponential of j k omega so it means in the time domain if you divide something by a factor k in the frequency domain it would be multiplied by that factor k and this is the expansion property but what effect would this property have this property will have the effect that the period would change now this would not be periodic over uh, this will not be periodic over the interval uh, 2 pi right this will now be periodic 
this I'm talking about the Fourier transform, right? With period equal to 2 pi upon k. And you understand it, why have I written it like this, right? The book has uh, written some uh, lines about it and you can read it by yourself. The discrete time nature of time index, uh, you have run into difficulties if A is not integer. Therefore, slow down and this and that so you can see it by your own self. I jump into the next property that is the seventh property and which is convolution. The seventh is convolution. Okay, now what does this say? Convolution is a time domain, which means if you have a signal x1 of n and it's convolved with another signal x2 of n in the time domain, so the corresponding Fourier transform in the frequency domain would get multiplied. This you know it. So you will have an x1 of exponential of j omega into x2 of exponential of j omega. Right? If you want me to have an example do you want me to have an example okay let's say i have x of n x1 of n is 1 upon 4 to the power n u of n x2 of n is 1 upon 2 to the power n u of n so have a look now x of n is a signal that is the that is obtained from the convolution of these two and the corresponding Fourier transform for the new signal x of n is unknown. So have a look what can you do you can take the convolution of the two right you get a signal in the time domain and then using this equation you can find the Fourier transform isn't it like this but can you do it that way. Yes, maybe you can, maybe you can do it, but I cannot do it that way, of course. And the properties, <coughs> I'm sorry, the properties are for, for people like me who cannot solve these mathematical things. So what can I do? If I look at the signal, so I know the, the Fourier transform for this signal, I know the Fourier transform for this signal. And if this signal, the linear, if the convolution of these two in the time domain, so the corresponding Fourier transform we were multiplied, right? We know that from the, from the basic formula that a to the power n u of n. And we've just written it over here. This a to the power n u of n is 1 minus a times exponential of, an, of a positive geomega. Positive geomega? Yes. So, which means that if I write it over here, x of exponential of j omega would be 1 upon, for, for the first one, we have like this. In the first one, my a is 1 upon 4, so I would have 1 minus 1 upon 4 exponential of j omega. And for the second one, I would have 1 upon 1 minus 2 exponential of j omega. This is my answer. Now, now have a look, have a look. Let me tell you one thing. What do you have? If you simplify this into some simpler form by partial fraction and then you find the values of A and B and then you imply the inverse Fourier transform a basic relation so you could also have the value of x of n. If the value of x of n was asked, let's say the Fourier transform was not asked. So if you, were, if you would go for the convolution, it would be very time consuming and very difficult. So by using the property, you can do it. You could directly state this Fourier transform by simplifying the partial friction, taking the inverse Fourier transform directly by just looking at it. Just looking at it, you can find the x of n as well. So this is what the properties are. So let me write it also by partial fraction x of n can be found and, and let's say this x of n is your homework so I know you would not do it but give it a try at least give it a try please that's it for property number seven and I don't have space so let me remove the board first <coughs> Uh, 
Okay. Now, the eighth. And the eighth is what? The eighth is the multiplication in the time domain. And you know this again, this is the inverse of the what? Convolution. So if you have an x1 multiplied with a signal x2, the corresponding Fourier transform would get convolved. And that is it. You can see examples by yourself. 9 is frequency shifting. Number 9 is frequency shifting. So, if I have a signal x of n and I shift the frequency by omega minus omega naught, omega naught is of course not the fundamental frequency, omega naught is just representing a shift amount. So, you multiply this in the time domain by exponential of j omega naught n. So, have a look, it's opposite. You have a minus over here, you have a plus over here, you have a plus over here, you have a minus over here. Is that fine? It is. If I say I have a signal, if I say that I have a signal and what is that signal? x of n is a to the power n u of n and then x1 of n is exponential of j pi by 2 into n. Now x of n plus 4 is unknown. So we know x of n would be uh, wait. So I was getting confused and the point is that this was multiplied with this and the corresponding Fourier transform for this was unknown. So we have the time shift property, we have the frequency shift property, right? So can you not do it yourself? You can. But anyways, A of n, U of n has the Fourier transform 1 upon 1 minus A E of J omega. Right? If you have X of n plus 4, let's say I go to, from this side. So if I have X of n plus 4, the, the Fourier transform would be what? The original Fourier transform? Exponential of j omega 4 divided by 1 minus a e power j 4. Right? 1 minus a e negative j omega. No. It would be like this. Similarly, if you have the next step now. Now if you have exponential of j pi by 2n into x of n plus 4 which means the frequency shift is involved now as well so with this you would multiply that thing so which means now you would have an exponential of j 4 and you would have omega minus pi by 2 and 1 minus a exponential of negative j omega minus pi by 2 and this is it this is it right this is it the next is the Parseval's relation, which is the tenth. Tenth is the Parseval's relation. The Fourier, trans Fourier series Parseval's relation was used to calculate the power of the signal. The Fourier transform relation is used to calculate the energy of a signal. The energy contained in a signal X we know it's equal to n running from a negative infinity to positive the magnitude of x of n whole squared right 
you can equivalently calculate it by the Fourier transform. You have 1 upon 2 pi, negative pi to pi, let's say I take the interval, and this is the magnitude of the Fourier transform x of exponential of j omega squared integrated with respect to omega. This is what the Fourier, this is the positive wall relation is. The last, the second last is the differentiation in frequency. Differentiation in frequency. Which means what? If we have uh, d d omega of x of exponential of j omega. So, what would we do? In the corresponding time domain, we would multiply the signal with an n and the frequency domain we multiply with a j. This is what the differentiation property is. And this is of course for the first difference, for the first order differentiation. If you have the kth order differentiation, so this would be j to the power k and to the power k. This is what the differentiation frequency property is. Say, say we have an example. Say that x of n is a signal having Fourier transform x of e of j omega. Now x1 is a signal, x1 of n is a signal n minus 2 whole squared into x of n. And now the corresponding Fourier transform x1 of j omega in terms of x of j omega is unknown. So here we look to x1 of n. So can I not write it like this? That it would be an n squared minus 2n minus, minus plus 4 times x of n and which could be written as n squared times x of n minus 2n times x of n plus 4 times x of n, right? Now for n squared times x of n, what would we have? For n squared times x of n, then we would have, now I'm talking about the corresponding Fourier transform x of u of g omega, n squared so it would be having j squared and the second derivative of x of j omega. Then a minus 2 is co uh, constant so a minus 2 you would write over here for n times x of n what do we have? This is n to the power 1 so you have j times the first derivative of this. And then finally plus 4 is a constant, so 4 I would write first and then for x of n, the Fourier transform is x of exponential of j omega and that is it, that is it for these properties, fine. Now let's say I talk about the duality property but in a little bigger picture the duality property and this is property number 12 and what is that bigger picture so let me write it down from the book and I will give this part of the video a little speed and I will write all the relations and then we will discuss it one by one okay
Okay, so I am done with this. I am done with this. Do you know what have I written? You know it basically, right? You know it. I have written all the relations. I have written all the relations of the Fourier tool. The general Fourier tool. We have the Fourier series. We have it in the continuous time. We have it in the discrete time. We have the Fourier transform. We have it in the continuous time. We have it in the discrete time. For each, we have the synthesis equation, we have the analysis, we have synthesis, we have analysis, synthesis, analysis, synthesis, analysis equations. We talk about duality now. The duality is in between the synthesis and the analysis equation. Now I have forgotten which one of these is synthesis and which analysis, so you know one is analysis, one is synthesis, right? Anyway, the duality. If you see over here in the first case, so the time domain is continuous whereas the frequency domain is discrete whereas the time domain is periodic but the frequency domain is aperiodic so can they match no so the duality exists over there no so in the continuous time Fourier series equation we have no duality we have no duality the discrete time now. The discrete time Fourier series. So have a look. The time domain equation is discrete. The frequency domain is discrete. The time domain is periodic. The frequency domain is periodic. So which means they can be matched together. So yes duality. We have duality in this case. Fine. The continuous time Fourier transform. The time equation is continuous. What was that? That was a B. It scared me. The time domain equation is continuous. The frequency domain equation is continuous. The time domain is aperiodic. The frequency domain is aperiodic. So can we have a match? We have a match. Which means we have yes duality. And finally, the discrete time Fourier transform. So, have a look. The time domain is discrete in frequency, and the frequency domain is the time domain is discrete in time, and the frequency domain is continuous. Whereas the time domain is aperiodic, and the frequency domain is periodic. So, do we have a duality? So, we cannot have duality. We cannot have so no duality. But have a look. One thing. The continuous time Fourier series and the discrete time Fourier transform, they have a duality together. How is this? So have a look. The time domain in the Fourier series is continuous, whereas the frequency domain is Fourier transform is continuous. The time domain in the Fourier series is periodic, whereas the frequency domain in the discrete time is periodic. Similarly, the frequency domain over here and the time domain over here. Frequency domain is discrete, over here time domain is discrete. Over here frequency domain is aperiodic, over here the time domain is aperiodic. So which means the continuous time Fourier series and the discrete time Fourier transform together have a together have a duality. Is that fine? So the four first we discussed individually, and the last is for the in between these two, the continuous time Fourier series and discrete time Fourier transform. So that is it for the properties. That is all about the discrete time Fourier transform. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Goodbye.